hello welcome back for those who have been following me on this channel my name is lc mcknight a native of zimbabwe and i have lived in the united states for many years and on this channel i talk about the different cultures that we face from one place to the next for me i talk about my personal experience too inside there i talk about different things and also i bring out my personal experience of growing up and uh, being born and grow up in Zimbabwe and also moved into the United States and all those things in between. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Code of Conducts. Uh, code of Conducts means many many different things that could mean from greeting. When we visit people, we greet people, we meet each other, we greet people. And when I first came here, it was a uh, kind of like a big shock that you greet people for the most part special family members you greet them and you give them a hug and uh, to me a hug is not an unusual thing I know of a hug when people they meet each other we hug each other but it was slightly different because in this case I had to give another opposite sex a hug maybe I don't know them that way even though they were considered to be family but I don't know them that well and it was kind of a little bit of a shock for me to think that I have to meet them today and I can give them a hug so that was a little bit of a shock in Zimbabwe we know of a hug but usually it's you from female to female people they give each other a hug and uh, male and male they also give each other a hug in America, it seems like widely spread out that male and female, they can give each other a hug, brother and sister, father and daughter, and all that. You know, it's just all mixed up there. Everybody give each other a hug. And uh, that was a little bit different, which I also got a big shock when my father came because I was so used to these hugs. Everybody, you know, everywhere I go, you know, it was just hug, hug. And I was used to that. And I was about to give my father a hug. And that came to him, to my father, as a big shock because normally we don't greet each other that way. There's this formal greeting, especially in my family. There was this formal greeting where you sit down and greet with a handshake and, you know, you do the clapping of the hand and all that. You know, it was like real formal. So this whole thing of just you hugging each other, hi, how are you? It's not, a, you know, like kind of like a common thing. So, but you know, here when I came, I had this, so I ran to my father and I tried to give him a hug and it, with a gentle push, he just kind of like pushed me and then he, you know, uh, you know, um, stretched his hand for me to give him a handshake. And that was kind of like, then I realized, oh my God, you know, I must have lived here a long time and I forgot about our culture and the way how we do things. Another thing is about uh, calling when a person is visiting someone. Uh, when I came here already, almost every household, they had a phone. The cell phones were not there that much. Just a few people maybe had cell phones. But the house phones where every household has a phone. So it's kind of like a common thing here that you would call someone and let them know that you're visiting, you're coming there. But when I was coming from home from Zimbabwe, calling a person was not like a common thing, one, and people did not mind you just popping in and just, you know, say, here I am, you know, people be excited, there was no like, well, I was, I was, you know, I was about to do this, most of the time people would leave what they wanted to do because they realized that they have a guest that have visited them, someone who have come from very far away and had just come to see them. So they would kind of like leave other things that, that you know, they wanted to do and kind of attend to you. But here, it was a little different. I did that, you know, maybe a few times to people thinking that I'm doing the good deed, you know, just popping at their home and knock at their door and uh, you know people were like what do you want and that's one way you never ask somebody like what do you want when they came to visit you it's like you have to open the door that's number one then you have to bring them inside and then they will state what they are there for if there is a specific reason if they are not just coming to 
to uh, be with you just to see you they'll state the reason we are here because of this and that and that so I was like oh my god people are asking me what do I want when I just did a good gesture to come and see them so it was a big shock again to think that people they can they can you know kind of get irritated and um you know like uh offended in a sense you know that someone just walk by and come to my house and say hi how are you it's like an offensive thing to us it was like a very exciting thing so it was something that i really got shocked about number three of this is the in-laws the in-laws the relationship we it's like we love one another we know we love one another but there's that like a distant respect relationship that's there so there's like this a high uh, level of like honoring and respecting your in-laws so if you are a daughter-in-law or your son-in-law in your in-laws is home there's that higher level of like respect that you cannot just like uh, loosen out and just do whatever you want to do that can come maybe after many years of you them knowing you and you knowing them and now you become like a um a real daughter you know like you are now a daughter now when you're first coming in there it's like you're a stranger you're just like this strange girl and you are under like a sort of like a scrutiny you are under you know they're observing your character they're observing what kind of a person are you respectful are you this and that are you th you know so it's like you stay kind of like a little bit of a like a distant just see you know doing what you are supposed to do the same as a son-in-law you cannot just like walk in the kitchen the daughter-in-law the same thing and again you know for me it was a big shock because i didn't know here it was like that uh, kind of like loose and free you know that i could just go to my mother-in-law and say you know i'm hungry so i remember one time i was really really hungry i was starved you know and uh you know i did not ask for food because i thought food was always going to be served because that's the way we do meal times it's not something that we have to kind of figure out you know when is meal time people they just know especially when they have a guest they pretty much know that you know at certain times we have to feed a guest and um you know and they will bring food they'll prepare the food and they'll feed the guests every single meal time they will do that so to me i was waiting for those meal times and each meal time was passing and there was no food there so i was thinking oh my god i still couldn't talk i had to talk about this way later you know many years later and I, I expressed it to say well you know I was really hungry but I couldn't say anything so you know these are things that you really also face in those uh, uh, cultures like that and the other fifth t thing that um, we we also look into is Africans by nature we are um, a little bit we take things a little bit slower we uh, we don't we are not in a rush of anything pretty much I would say we do things diligently work hard and do what we need to do but people are not in a rushed up atmosphere you know things because I believe I'm not sure about this but I believe that we can only do things within certain times of the day and we cannot pass a certain time of the day and still do certain things so it's like if you didn't do certain things within a certain time it's simple you are not going to do it so there's no rush to try and figure how you are going to do it unlike here and i believe that was also uh it's brought by technology you know unlike here when i came here there's electricity everywhere there's uh running water everywhere there's uh there's everything everywhere you know there's a stove and, and all those things that just makes you you can do things any time of the day so people they tend to be i would say overload themselves with the responsibilities because they can do it for example you can do laundry in the middle of the night if you have the washing machine right there you can cook in the middle of the night because you know you have the stove and all you need to do is lift the stove and you can you can cook unlike i grew up in the country so you know you have to catch the firewood uh, you know light the, the uh, firewood and then let it you know grow and then you know then you cook 
that takes a lot of time and energy and everything. So you cannot just say, I'm just going to cook at 12 o'clock midnight or something like that. You can't. So you are not in a rush of anything. You just know if it is about six and I'm preparing my dinner, that's the last thing I'm going to do. You might wash your dishes, that's about it. And you have to go to sleep because it's super dark out there and you cannot do anything more. So people are like, in a sense, like kind of like relaxed. And that relaxation, you're going to find it in different places that you go. Because when you go into a restaurant, for example, today you go into a restaurant, the service is not running, you know, it's not a person moving like this and running. No, they are going to take their time, they walk, the step they walk is different from the step that maybe you will find in the Western world. You know, they just walk, you know, like casually walking and getting to do or to take care of you what you need to be taken care of. And, and you know, unlike here, you know, people, they are like, you know, they are rushing because that's the nature of things because they can do more. They are able to do more. They are, they are not able to do more. So there's no, like, any, anything that you have to rush for. You just have to do what you need to do. That's it. Uh, people, number five, people, they are, you know, most of the time in Africa, maybe now it's kind of changing a little bit, but, you know, people were used to be insistent. When you are giving something to someone, for example, you get um, a guest in your home and you, you prepare a meal for them. You want to prepare a meal for them. The first thing they will say is that, oh, no, no, don't worry about preparing a meal for me. I'm okay. You know, they could be starving, you know, but it's like a cultural thing that have been um, uh, brought, that have been uh, practiced. And people, they would definitely refuse something when they want it. Maybe you prepare a package for them, maybe it's a present or something, some kind of something for them to take when they leave or something and you give to them. They will say, oh, no, no, don't worry about that. You know, I'm okay, you know, but you have to go like this, you know, no, 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 that's okay. You can have this one too. You can have, oh, no, you can't come out of here without eating. You have to eat, you have to eat, you know, like that, maybe the third time a person will go like, oh, okay, you know, like that. So it's not, you know, um, unusual for a person to say, oh, no, 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 I'm okay, when they are really not okay. They want that thing. But it's a cultural practice that they have. I heard of a story, right, actually here in America where someone wanted a ride. And I don't think it was actually African, it was I think the Asian people, apparently they they have the same, you know, touch a lot with Africans. So, you know, the person stood there and they wanted a ride to go somewhere. People were just coming from this place and they were going to the same place. And this person wanted a ride. And a car passed by and said, do you want a ride? And they said, no, 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 I, I, no, I'm okay. You know, the car passes. Do you want a ride? No, I'm okay. You know, the car passes. And three, four cars until the time for this person to go to the event, whatever the, what was taking place, was over. They could not go to that event. And they lost that. They had to go back home. To them, I could not get a ride. To other people, they think, oh, this person refused a ride. Completely different understanding. So, you know, I laugh about that, but at the same time, it's something so real. It's something that people, they go through, and it's, it's very real when you are going through it. Because to you, you don't think that you are different. You think that you are normal, you are practicing what you know to do. And to other people, they are doing the same thing. And that's where the dynamics is really is about cultures. And this is all I have today. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can watch some of these videos that are being shown here. This, especially this video that tells you about the best things that I also like. And you can watch it right here. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time for the next video. Bye.